So, Luke, the Bills find a way to lose this one. They're now 6-6. Six and six. And I know you want to talk about this. They miss a massive opportunity at the end to win this thing. Massive opportunity, Jay. In this league, the best teams know how to execute at a high level in the clutch moments. And the Bills had it. We talked about this play. It's third and seven. Overtime. Touchdown wins it. You see here, this is cover zero. Boom. We're all manned up. There's nobody in the middle of the field. In this league, when you have cover zero, certain routes will actually check to different routes because there's nobody there. Certain routes will stay. It all depends on the team. But what happens here is Gabe Davis continues to run his corner, which is called where Josh Allen think, thinks that he's actually just going to run to the middle of the field, which is where he throws it. I don't know who was right, but you can't have that kind of miscommunication in that moment. And then you talk about the other mistakes the Bills make. I mean, you miss two field goals, and I'm not giving you a pass, especially when the Eagles can nail a 59-yarder to tie the game. And then the one moment Josh Allen played incredible today, but this can't happen. You're up three. It's the fourth quarter. Go down, drive the field here like you've been doing. You have the one bad play there by Josh. You have two missed field goals, and you still have a shot to win it in overtime. Josh Allen, they picked up the protection on that cover zero look. You just saw it, and you're just not on the same page. It's heartbreaking because if you're a Bills fan, you're sitting there kicking yourself because you should have just walked into Philly in the rain. Yep. And won the game. It was right there for them. You also had an issue with how they handled the last 20 seconds of regulation. This enraged me. This enraged me. I couldn't even fathom it. First and foremost, they iced the kicker, which blew a timeout. Okay, I understand it's not likely. You got Josh Allen. You got Stephon Diggs. You got 20 seconds and a timeout. Like I said, should have been two timeouts. Do I need to remind Bills fans what happened a couple years ago with 13 seconds in the playoffs? Yes, I understand it's raining. I understand there's only 20 seconds. You have Josh Allen. The man was on a mission today. You're telling me that you should have had two timeouts, could potentially have three plays. You're not at least going to give it a shot to get in the field goal range? Yeah. If, again, I can't even fathom just, oh, we'll play for overtime. Right. Drives me insane. Right, yeah, because like you said, the, you've got an MVP caliber quarterback right there playing an MVP type game, and yet we spent time making the case for Christian McCaffrey on Thursday for the MVP, but then Jalen Hurts comes out on Sunday. It just complicates things for us. It certainly does. I thought Jalen struggled in the first half, and his numbers throwing the ball weren't necessarily great, but you look at what he did in the second half and totally in this game, he was responsible for five touchdowns. He threw for three. He ran for two, 65 yards on the ground. He threw for 200 yards. Like I said, that was a weak spot in the game. In the second half, this guy was miraculous. Whether it was on-time throws like we just see, but even here, the Cecil movement, boom, flip the hips, get the ball where only his receiver can catch it, and he makes a great play here, don't get me wrong, but it's impressive. Also, this is the threat that he has. He's such a tremendous runner, knew exactly where to go, where to go here in the coverage of the Bills were playing. I, I thought he really did enough. Crunch time, overtime leads a drive. I mean, that's why he's the front runner for the MVP. Does this kind of performance uh, lead you to believe that this team will surely win this conference? Or uh, is this Chargers team just too flawed to get a good read on it? Definitely the latter there, Jay. Yeah. And, you know, they got the win, traveled to L.A., a lot of great things. Defense played tremendous. Offensively, I thought, they were a bit lackadaisical at times. They could have really came out, I thought, at many moments of this game and, and just stepped on the throats of this Chargers team and put them out of it. Instead, it became somewhat close there at the end. So when you talk about the AFC right now, I think this is another case where, yes, they are the number one seed, they're the number one team right now, but there's a lot of arguments that can be made for that top seed. You know, KC looked better today. I think the Dolphins have obviously done pretty well. There's a lot of teams that could claim that they're the best team in the AFC. I like the defense on Baltimore. I thought, again, they were very, very stout tonight, but offensively, not their best performance. The playoff picture in the AFC looks like this. A massive cluster of teams vying for those three wild card spots. Steelers and Browns, both 7-4. and four. Colts won over the box Sunday. They hold that final wild card spot. And there you see the Buffalo Bills at 6-6. Six and six. Still very much in this thing if you look at it on paper, but when you really look at it, do you believe that their season's actually over? No, not yet. I, there's a lot of people right now. Oh, the season's over. They're six and six. They just went into Philly and almost beat who I think is the most talented and the best team in the NFL. Yes, they make a ton of mistakes, but again, they have great players. They have a tough schedule. They're going to need yeah. to win some of these games, but can they? Yes. Will they? That's another question. 
But you sit here, the Colts are in there right now. Do we think the Colts are going to continue to win? Do we think the Broncos are going to continue to win? Or the Texans? I think the Texans might be the hardest out of those three that I'm talking about. But is their season over? That's a ridiculous idea. There's not a game on the schedule that they're not capable of winning. Yeah, especially when you see what they did against Philly. Also. Exactly, Jay. Yeah. So all this talk that the season is over is complete nonsense to me. The, the division, I do not think they will be able to make up that ground. But can they still sneak in the wild card? Absolutely. They got to win some tough games. Everyone talking about Deontay Johnson uh, just giving up on the play. It seems very clear something's awry. Uh, that's definitely the case, <laughs> Jay. And again, I mentioned it there. What's tough is that when things are not going your way, especially offensively for the Steelers, what you want to see is some of your best players really finding a way to do anything they can to make things work. Instead, you have a guy out here who's pouting or upset. There was talks about in the locker room, you know, this week they got into, a, there was an altercation going on. I mean, this is about as bad as it gets. Yeah. You want to see a guy like him just out there grinding for his teammates. Okay, I'm not getting the rock on this. I'm going to make sure that my corner is not going to be touching Najee Harris. No, we don't even come off the ball. We're not even paying attention. Yeah. And then there's a fumble. And we're just walking around. We have no Looks idea. Looks like he just thought the play was over and was getting ready for the next play. Yeah, you, you can't. And they obviously won today, but you can't win with that type of attitude or effort. In this league, it will not happen. Chiefs did win. They were playing the Raiders. I grant you that. But are they officially back in your mind after this win? How did they look to you today? This was what they needed. I was thrilled for them. If you're a Chiefs fan, you need to be thrilled. You start early in this game, you're down 14 nothing, And you've heard all the post-game interviews coming into this thing that Patrick Mahomes has said, our defense won us a game, our defense won us a game. The defense played well after the first quarter, don't get me wrong. But early on in this game, you're down 14. You need the offense to explode. And what happened? That's exactly what you saw. And we've said it numerous times on the show. We need a number two guy. And he showed up today. And his name was Rasheed Rice. Yeah. 10 targets, 8 catches, 107 yards, and a touchdown. You, you talked early. Kelsey still got his over 90 yards yep, receiving. He sure did. And he's going to continue to get his plays in there. And now all of a sudden when you can add a number two guy, this offense can really click and fire and look fluid and have rhythm, which is what they had today. The next step is doing it against a team that's not called the Las Vegas Raiders. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's a, there may be a slight asterisk on this game. However, you knew Andy Reid was in the way he talked after last week's loss. You know, he's like, we'll take care of it. We'll get it. You just knew he was going to get these guys involved, and that's exactly what he did. Luke, the Bears hold that first overall pick because of their trade with the Carolina Panthers, and the Bears hold the fourth overall pick. I mean, you got to think the Pats are going to get a quarterback. Who it is, I don't know, but they certainly need one. Uh, you have uh, Caleb Williams, of course, from USC, Bo Nix. You got Penix in Washington. And you have Drake May in North Carolina. You have four really highly rated quarterbacks. Yeah. Is Billy Belichick purposely gunning for one of those quarterbacks? <laughs> I mean, that's a conspiracy at this point. I'm not, this is where my head goes. And obviously, I'm kidding here. But this guy's been known to be a savant, a guru of how to win games like this. I mean, this throw, this man moved three feet and he throws it right to him. Oh, we think it'll be different because now we have Bailey Zappi in the game. This is, I mean, Two guys probably could have picked that, had no chance of being completed, and then we somehow pull a 35-yarder to go to overtime. Yeah. Jay, it's so strange. I've said it numerous times on the show. When I was playing this league, Bill Belichick was known as a guy who could take a bunch of good NFL players, yeah. not great ones, bring them together, play clean, fundamental football, and win a bunch of games. And somehow... They have the worst fundamentals, turn the ball over like crazy. It's like they don't even practice. Yeah. It's unbelievable. He apparently signed a contract extension in the offseason, did Belichick. So, assuming he's going to be making the decisions, we assume he's definitely going to have a quarterback. Speaking of teams that should draft a quarterback, how about the Chicago Bears? Why not? I Just mean, go out and get one. And, well, no, take – Take Marvin Harrison Jr. Yes. At, at one. Yes. And then take your quarterback at four and boom, you got your team. Or somehow get the pastronaut because he's incredible and he's <laughs> we're going to see him tomorrow night against him. Here he goes. <laughs> it is Josh Dobbs, Luke's favorite, and the Vikings taking on Justin Fields and the Chicago Bears. Pre-game coverage begins at 6 Eastern. That's the Monday nighter.
And those odds, by the way, brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Luke, you going to join me for this one after? Because I know you love a little post-game Josh Dobbs. I cannot wait to see how electric Josh Dobbs is tomorrow night.